All right, so uh, let's start as we have, uh, uh, you know, in pretty much every show lately, uh, with an update from uh, the situation in Israel, Biden, Gaza stuff. I mean, wow. Um, so Biden uh, did an interview uh, the other night, uh, and in the interview, he was the most explicit he's been. Uh, if Israel, is, he will not provide weaponry to Israel if it's going to use it in Rafa. Rafa is a red line. I mean, uh, uh, you, we know American presidents are very, very good at abiding by red lines. Maybe, maybe they're better at abiding by red lines when uh, allies are involved than they are uh, when when foes are involved. But uh, at Rafa is a red line. If Israel goes into Rafa, they're not going to get these weapons. Um, and uh, uh, th that is a public statement. It was forceful. And what does this do? Well, what this does, of course, is Hamas is listening to it and say, wow, cool. We just need to hang in there, right? I mean, Israel can go into Rafah, so, so kind of we win. Why would we negotiate? Why not let's wait a little bit, let, let the Israelis sweat, uh, we're not going to release hostages. You know, Biden's doing the work for us. Biden. Biden is defeating Israel. We don't need to defeat Israel. Now, you know, I, I, I hope and we can hope that Israel ignores Biden and goes in anyway. It doesn't really need these particular bombs in order to attack Biden. In order to attack Rafa, it needs the bombs more um, for taking care of uh, Iran, if, if that becomes an issue, because these are pretty big bombs. But... Iran is listening to it and saying, oh, hmm, Israel might run out of bombs. Okay, cool. Maybe we can get Hezbollah involved. Maybe we can get our other proxies involved. Maybe, maybe we should attack Israel again. Maybe this time America won't shoot down some of the missiles and help them out. But what the hell? I mean, talk about, you know, uh, siding with the enemy and giving the enemy all the wrong signals and working to defeat your so-called ally that you supposedly committed to helping defeat Hamas and prevent them from ever coming back to the Gaza Strip. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, Biden is basically, uh, you know, betraying Israel, stabbing them in the back. Now, I know he's not doing this because he really believes this. He's doing this for political reasons. He's doing this to try to win Michigan. Uh, and, and maybe that's true. But really, do you think, does anybody think, does Biden think, does anybody in the Biden campaign think that doing this is going to change the mind of people yelling, uh, you know, uh, 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 genocide, by, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, genocide Joe or whatever, right? Um, <clears throat> does anybody think that that's going to sway them? Now, it could, at the margin, commit get more uh, Arabs in Michigan to vote for him. But uh, God, is he desperate? And he is desperate because uh, in spite of the stories uh, that Stormy Daniels is telling um, about her uh, uh, sexual... Uh, encounter with uh, Donald Trump and it being paid off and all of that, uh, uh, Trump is doing well in the polls again. That is, uh, uh, Biden had a slight bump, and uh, but it, it, does, it, it really does not look good for Biden. It's really hard to believe uh, in many respects, uh, primarily because I think so many people dislike Trump, but because, I, I mean, because even in the Republican primary, even though Nikki Haley's not running. She's still getting a significant percentage of the vote. But it, it, it does look like Trump is the front runner and that Biden is running desperate and people do not want to vote for him. So it, it really does, um, <clears throat> does appear that uh, this is an act of desperation uh, on, uh, on Biden's behalf. Um, by the way, an act of desperation, I think, is going to come back to bite him. Uh, in, in this sense, I saw a number of posts um, online from uh, people who were who, who, from wealthy people uh, who lean, lean uh, Republican, but, but not lean Republican, have always mostly been Republican, but lean kind of free market Republican who hate Trump, despise Trump. 
right? Really, really hate Trump. But who said, there was, there was a good one from Cliff Asnes. Uh, I know Cliff pretty well. And Cliff despises Trump and has been actively engaged in anti-Trump stuff since 2016. And, and I think gave a lot of money from what he wrote, gave a lot of money to Nikki Haley. And Trump yesterday was, and, and uh, uh, Cliff was saying yesterday, God, if, uh, if, um, uh, <clears throat> if this, uh, if this is, um, if this is what Biden is going to be like, if, if, if this is, if, if this is Biden's behavior, that he said, I'm considering the unthinkable. And unthinkable is voting for Trump. And I think you there's a lot of Jews, uh, a lot of wealthy Jews, Ackerman, maybe even the guy who forced uh, the president of Harvard to resign. A lot of very wealthy Jews who are sitting there and saying, uh, you know, we would probably vote for Biden, not because not because we're leftists, but because we despise Trump. And um, although some of them, are, some of them are, are, are lifelong Democrats, but we won't because of what he's doing right now. And we won't give him money. Uh, so it would be really interesting. And of course, he, he might be losing money from the far left. So he's kind of stuck in any, he, he's clearly taken the stand that he can afford to lose the peep, the pro-Israel vote. He can't afford to lose the anti-Israel vote. So he's going to go with the. He's going to go anti-Israel and and try to try to track the anti-Israel vote. And yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, of course, uh, this morning, other voices within the administration, not formally. We're saying, look, we're really going to provide Israel with everything it needs. We're not going to abandon them. We support its mission. We support what it wants to do. Uh, you know, these are probably not bombs they need for Rafa, so no big deal. As long as they don't use these bombs for Rafa, we're okay. We'll provide it elsewhere. Um, and on and on and on and on. So, uh, you know, they're trying to speak out of both sides of their mouth. They're trying to cover their bases. They're trying to appease everybody. This is this is American politics. It's it's disgusting. It's offensive. It's uh, it's the the kind of playing to your voters that both parties do uh, that Trump is a master of, uh, and Biden is just not very good at it. Uh, and um, it, it just increases the odds that Biden's going to lose this. So uh, it does look increasingly like. Uh, Biden loses, but of course, a lot can happen. We're talking about Donald Trump. So a lot can happen between now and then. Um, <clears throat> you know, maybe maybe people will, uh, will tune in to, uh, to Stormy Daniels. It, it is pretty amazing that the alternative to this geriatric, um, never particularly intelligent, uh, uh, completely pragmatic Democrat who nobody wants to vote for. The alternative to that is a guy who's being accused for paying hush money to, um, to a porn star. It, it's, it, you know, it's it, it is a, a sad, depressing, pathetic state of American politics that this is what we've come to. These two are the best people America could put up uh, for president, that these two political parties could nominate for president of the United States. I mean, pretty pathetic, pretty pathetic. So uh, here we are. Anyway, uh, in terms of actual stuff in Gaza, uh, Israel does seem to uh, be building up the forces uh, in the uh, east of Rafa to maybe uh, engage more thoroughly with Rafa itself and, and enter into uh, the rest of Gaza and, and finish off this mission, uh, this war that was started October 7th. Uh, it, it's hard to tell if, if that's actually what's going to happen. I think we'd have some um, uh, pre-warning because my expectation is that Israel would uh, put down leaflets to tell c civilians to evacuate, and they haven't done yet. They, they only did it with a small region in eastern Rafah, where fighting is ongoing, 
It's also true that Israel had to enter uh, in, for a third time into an area in Gaza City that they claimed to have cleared twice before. And there was intense fighting in this area in Gaza City. This is in the center north of Gaza, an area which uh, Israel had claimed more than once that they had under their control and yet uh, a significant presence of Hamas uh, in, in this area. Israel had to go, go back in. Um, and, and maybe this is a tactic Israel uses. It uh, withdraws, lets them come out of their holes in the ground, kills them, withdraws, like new ones comes out of their holes in the ground, kills them. Maybe it's the tactic. I'm not sure how many years this would have to go on for in order to get rid of them uh, in the end. But um, given the tunnel network, maybe it's just impossible. Uh, maybe they, maybe it's impossible to uh, uh, to do it. Uh, it, it. They are discovering, of course, in Rafah, close to the Egyptian border, uh, many tunnels. Uh, we'll see how many tunnels they ultimately discover in Rafah, leading into Egypt, uh, and uh, how many of these tunnels are known to the Egyptians, and how many of these tunnels have facilitated smuggling out, who knows, maybe even hostages, uh, and smuggling in, of course, weapon systems and, uh, and everything else. So uh, this should have been the first step in the war, taking over the uh, south, uh, you know, basically destroying the tunnel system into Egypt, isolating Hamas and isolating the Palestinian in Gaza completely, from the rest of the world by isolating them from the Egyptians. Uh, but it was not the first thing that was done in the war. And uh, as a consequence, we, we, we still hope it will be done at some point. But that is, uh, that looks, that's where Israel has positioned its forces to do, whether they actually go through with it or not. Still to be determined. Uh, everything that, they ultimately do everything, it looks like. It just takes them much, much longer than it should and that um, I, and uh, that it should, and that it was expected. I think they've done more than I expected, slower than I expected. That is, uh, that is uh, based on my assessment early on. All right, let's see. So, so that is uh, the news. And, and of course, you know, offensive operations, defensive operations continues in the north of Israel, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, um, uh, the, the Hezbollah, uh, you know, that is still a stalemate. That's as I did expect. Uh, at some point, Israel is going to have to go into Lebanon and rid itself of this threat to its northern border. I wonder if Biden will allow them to use the bombs then. I don't know. I wonder if the Biden administration will support Israel's attempt uh, to go into Lebanon and to clear southern Lebanon of Hezbollah. Uh, in any case, it's something they're going to have to do at some point, uh, but it's, uh, it, there's still no indications that that at some point is any time in, um, in, uh, in the immediate future.